Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. Apparently, rumors of Vibe Coding's demise have been greatly exaggerated. Speaking with TechCrunch on Monday, Lovable CEO Anton Osika said that the company is closing in on 8 million users, dramatic growth from their 2.3 million active users back in July. Osika claimed the company is now seeing 100,000 new products built on Lovable every single day. We didn't get a new revenue number, but Lovable crossed the $100 million ARR milestone back in June, and there are currently rumors of new funding being raised at a $5 billion valuation, which would almost triple their valuation from fundraising over the summer. Now, part of the interview addressed a report from Barclays in September, which showed that traffic to Lovable had dropped by 40% since a peak in August. Osika said that retention was still strong, with 100% net dollar retention, meaning the average user spends more over time. Now, of the major vibe coding startups, Lovable might be the one that's most focused on empowering non-coders. The platform not only enables easy prototyping, but is increasingly being used to deploy full products. If you've ever been on AIDailyBrief.ai, for example, that is built, maintained, and hosted all with help from Lovable. Now, when it comes to where the company is focused, it follows from that same specialization. Osika said the part of the engineering organization that we're moving the quickest on hiring is security engineers. He said that the goal is to make building with Lovable more secure than building with just human written code. Now, in terms of the battle for the vibe coding space and increased competition from OpenAI and Anthropic, Osika said that he thinks it's not winner take all. He said, if we can unlock more human creativity and human agency and just driving the change so that anyone can create if they have good ideas, that should be celebrated regardless of whoever does that. Next up, Meta has returned to open source with a new speech recognition model. Called Omnilingual ASR, the model's big selling point is support for a huge range of underserved languages. Out of the box, the model can recognize over 1,600 languages. In contrast, OpenAI's open source Whisper model supports 99 languages. Developers can also extend this support with a feature called Zero Shot in Context Learning. The model can learn new languages at inference time using just a few paired examples of speech and text with no retraining required. Meta said the feature can allow the model to support as many as 5,400 languages, which is pretty close to every language in use globally. Functionally, then, Meta are claiming to have created something like an AI Rosetta Stone for universal speech recognition. Reported benchmarks are also very strong, with the model more than quadrupling the performance of OpenAI's Whisper Large model. Meta claims a character error rate of less than 10% for 95% of high- and medium-resource languages, as well as 36% of low-resource languages with less than 10 hours of audio in their datasets. Now, while the model itself is very cool, the reason that most people are taking notice is that the release suggests that Meta might not be completely done with open-source models. When Mark Zuckerberg started spending billions of dollars to build out the superintelligence team, there was a suspicion that the days of leading open source models coming out of Meta were numbered. Does this suggest that those concerns were overblown? Only time will tell, but it's certainly a positive sign. Next up, some interesting comments from a deep seek researcher who has warned that AI could replace most jobs within a decade. Senior researcher Chen Deli made a rare public appearance at the World Internet Conference in China late last week alongside executives from five other AI and robotics companies. He warned that over the next 10 to 20 years, quote, societal structures will also be greatly challenged. Tech companies should play the role of guardians of humanity at the very least protecting human safety, then helping to reshape societal order. Chen said that we're currently in the honeymoon phase where AI cannot work independently to complete economically useful tasks, and people can harness AI to boost their own productivity. However, he predicted that the next five to 10 years will see a rapid transition that leads to massive job cuts. Chen suggested, quote, during this period, tech companies should serve as whistleblowers, warning society of potential risks. Now, this view certainly isn't rare in the West. What makes it interesting is to see it emerge from one of the leading Chinese companies. AI optimism among the U.S. population is among the lowest in the world at 39%, but in contrast, Chinese sentiment is among the highest at 83%. The AI transformation has become a core part of the Chinese government's economic and social strategy. In that context, the comments from Chen seem extremely non-consensus and frankly, even potentially a little risky. Moving over to markets, CoreWeave more than doubled their revenue forecast last quarter, but delays in data center construction have lowered revenue forecasts. The AI data center operator reported earnings on Monday, with revenue doubling year over year to come in at $1.36 billion, outperforming analyst estimates. CoreWeave also trimmed their loss making to $0.22 cents per share, coming in way under the $0.57 cents per share projected by analysts, and an 85% reduction compared to a year ago. Still, the big story from CoreWeave's earnings was a delay to a major product that's limiting forward revenue. CEO Michael and Trader disclosed that a third-party developer is causing temporary delays. Fourth quarter earnings will be impacted, but the client agreed to an adjusted timeline, so CoreWeave will maintain the full value of the contract. And Trader said, Everybody is frustrated. The data center provider is frustrated. We're frustrated. The client is frustrated. People who are waiting on the next iteration of AI are frustrated. 
Now, the mystery client could be OpenAI or Meta, who each have over $10 billion in contracts with CoreWeave. CoreWeave lowered full-year revenue forecast to $5.05 billion from $5.15 billion due to the delays. Now, one really positive signal, however, from that call, it seems that installed GPUs are holding their value for longer than expected. CoreWeave has been criticized in the past for assuming a six-year depreciation schedule on NVIDIA H100s, which is longer than the more common four- or five-year schedule. During earnings, however, CoreWeave announced that their first H100 contract was reaching expiry and was re-signed within 5% of the original price. In other words, at the moment at least, it looks like the scarcity of compute is trumping all other factors in the current market. Now, checking in on AI stock themes overall, it does seem like many of the jitters last week were perhaps broader macro factors and not AI alone. As we came into the week with a deal to end the government shutdown deal on the horizon, there was a major Wall Street rebound with AI stocks leading the way. The S&P 500 was up 1.3%, winning back around 75% of its drop from last week. The Nasdaq regained around two-thirds of last week's loss, and NVIDIA led the way with a 4.8% rally. Now, I certainly do not think that this means that all of the concern that we saw last week was just based on bigger macro factors, but it is a good reminder that right now, AI is both the chief beneficiary and biggest victim of any shift in market sentiment, good, bad, or otherwise. That, however, is going to do it for today's headlines. Next up, the main episode.